There's no doubt about it. When you're 11 years old, secondary school can be a real house of horror. A place of dread, full of strange rooms and intimidating faces. Welcome to Year 7. Do settle down. Of course, the terror of transition is eased by induction days, organised by almost all secondary schools. But should pupils be offered more than a look round and a chat? In this programme, we'll be looking at two projects which are helping to soothe the shock of moving up to the big school. Both involve taking advantage of ICT. At King Edward VII High School in Melton Mowbray, lower year pupils are given rooms away from the main school and they also have their own wireless network and a dedicated portal. If you can get the transition right, uh, then any learning loss that typically does happen when students transfer from one key stage to another can be minimised. Students can then embark on key stage three with the best possible resources and the best possible attitude to learning and, and obviously do well from the word go. At Painsley Catholic College in Cheadle on the Staffordshire Moorlands, video conferencing is being developed to reach out to primary schools. Transition is so important with our, with our Year 6 students, Year 7, to get them off to a good start. But also, really, it's to make sure that I'm getting the best out of the children from when they first hit their first lesson in IT at Painsley. And IT starts at Year 1, it doesn't start in Year 7. And that's my philosophy behind it, and that's why I'm so interested in transition, I think. It's nearly 9 o'clock and everyone's on high alert in the ICT department at Painsley College. More than 120 primary pupils are arriving to be taught the same lesson at the same time by the same teacher in five different classrooms. But just when they think everything is under control, disaster strikes. If you can hear me, just put your hands in the air and cheer, please. No? Can you hear me upstairs? No? Carry on with what you were doing until we sort this problem out. One, two. What seems to be the problem? The audio has gone in the classrooms. So it's, it's the first time it's ever happened in the four, four years we've run. Pardon? There's nothing in any of the rooms. Nobody's hearing me at all. A1, B1, B2, B3, C2. Video conferencing is go. At last, in five classrooms on three floors. B2, give me a wave in B2. Can you hear me now? Excellent, we're on live. Welcome to Paisley's Learn Remote Day. With the audio problem identified and fixed, the lesson gets underway. The pupils are being shown how to create a PowerPoint presentation. The subject of the presentation is themselves. I'm going to insert by going to picture and then I'm going to choose from file. And you can see here is a photograph of some people with black faces, one of which is me. That's when I was a coal miner. Peter is no stranger to transition himself. He's made a dramatic shift from coal board to whiteboard, having started his working life down a pit. When the colliery shut in 1993, I thought, what shall I do with my life? And I thought, well, I'll be a teacher. And I went to university and got my teaching certificate in mathematics, and I've taught here ever since. So you made your own uh, quite substantial transition? Uh, yeah, a very, very different environment in the coal mine compared to working in a... Uh, school, not least of which is you work with females, which you don't do in a coal mine. <laughs> when Peter took over the ICT department, one of his biggest problems was Year 7. Most of the pupils were arriving from eight primaries in the area, with widely different skill levels in ICT. Peter set about introducing consistency and improving standards. We were doing things like making sure that they were all using the same scheme of work, uh, we were providing them with the same textbook across the pyramid, it's targeting the teachers and giving them the skills and, more importantly, the confidence to deliver the, um, the, the national curriculum. And the consistency across the pyramid has really come on lips and bounds. And we, we can say now, hand on heart, that um, 
the general experience the majority of the children coming to us here from year six is reasonably consistent. Paisley ICT teachers make regular visits to the eight primaries before bringing all the pupils together for this lesson towards the end of the academic year. It introduces them to Key Stage 3 while acquainting them with the school. I want you to all look now at the piece of paper that was given out to you early on. It was called Using Images. <laughs> so what you're going to do now is watch a presentation that I'm going to load up on your screens. What's it like being taught by a teacher who's not in the room? It's a bit fun and it's a bit weird because you don't actually know if they can hear you or, or see you. Are you more tempted to, to play up? No. Do you think you prefer it if the teacher's not in the same room? Yeah, I think so. Can you tell me why? Because uh, you just feel like more able to do stuff. Makes you feel more responsible because you're on your own. Yeah. And that the teachers trust you to be on your own in the room. Break time is reached without any further crisis. OK, we're going to end the lesson now, so thanks for listening. I'll see you back here at no later, please, than uh, 10.45. So we've got <laughs> 10 minutes. Off you go. How's it going, Pete? Uh, gremlins this morning, one of which was a, a faulty microphone lead. Um, and then we've got a few stations who are not, that are not picking up the RM Tutor, which is the software we use to control the stations so the kids can see the demo from my monitor. So apart from the mic not working and some of the computers yeah. not working, it's going wonderfully. It's going OK. There's a change of teacher for the next lesson, which looks at fonts and colours. Does it make you feel nervous, sort of performing in front of four classes, five classes at once? No, not at all, because I just sort of almost pretend I'm teaching just to one class. Um, and it's because you don't get the interaction back, it's, it, it's not as stressful, no. Because it, it's almost just, it's like lecturing almost, like in a university, I suppose, you're talking and not much, not much back. Thank you very much. Can we start now, then? Thank you. The presentations the pupils are working on now will be used to introduce themselves to each other when they return next term. I'm doing my family, my hobbies, my pets and my friends. Right. Is it useful? Did you know how to do this before? No. Is it easy? Yeah. Or is it from school, don't have the PowerPoint. Just need one to do so it's more interesting on these. Oh, so this is the first time you've learnt about PowerPoint? Yeah. And is it easy? Yeah. Once you get used to it. Do you find it a bit scary coming to a big school like this? Yeah, because our school is very small. And coming to a big school is quite scary. What was the scariest thing? Meeting all the new people and wondering what they were going to be like, the pupils in the school. Do you think the teachers or the pupils are the scariest? Which ones? Teachers, probably. There's a secondary teacher in each of the classrooms to help out as well as staff from most of the primaries. It's given the children the opportunity to find out what facilities are here so that when they come down in September, it's not a completely alien environment to them. And using the PowerPoint programme that we're using now, we actually, as a first primary school, haven't got that programme in school to use. So it's given the children an introduction to using that programme as well. What's more important, that they are learning about ICT or learning about Painsley High School? I think they're both just as important. I think one to learn about Painsley is because they're going to be coming here for five years and it's quite a big step in their lives. But also ICT is an important part of life now. So I think combining the two together is really beneficial for them. No more time me talking, more time for you now. And you've got 20 minutes to carry on with your presentations, OK? But make sure you can read the information. That's the most important thing. Lunchtime provides respite for the technical staff who take to their nerve centre. How are the nerves in the nerve centre? Today, we uh, go to stressful points when we've kind of realised that it could be worse and relax and have a laugh about it. So is this rocket science or can any school do this? Any school, I say, that's got the equipment can do it. The PowerPoint lesson continues in the afternoon with a new face for the camera. Good afternoon, uh, my name's Mr Kinsella and uh, my job today is to uh, teach you about the do's and don'ts <coughs> of putting your presentations together. Year 9 pupils are recruited to help out during the day. It's an experience they went through themselves two years ago. 
How did you find it two years ago? It was good because we got to know the school before we came in September, so it kind of broke the scary barrier. It was good. And what about you? And you know how to use all the software. It might be different from primary schools. So when you then returned in September, were you relaxed or were you still worried? I was more confident than when I first came, because I knew where everything was. Were you really worried when you first came to the school? I was quite worried when I first came, because I haven't got any brothers or sisters who helped me along, so it was really the people who were, who were met in the induction days that helped me, and I mean, they helped me when I came to school. Try not to overpower the slides with too much information, because sometimes busy slides actually confuse the reader. How's it going? How's the lesson going? Yeah, it's going absolutely fantastic. Um, the kids are getting a lot out of it, and uh, it's amazing what, what what the kids can actually uh, see with it. It's unbelievable what, what we can actually do. So I think it's, it's going really well. Kid, the kids are enjoying it as well. How can you tell when you're not in the room? Um, well, we, we can actually see what's going on in the other classrooms. The kids can either wave or they can give some kind of indication on, on how things are going. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's going all right. We've only got a small screen. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, we can't really see what they're doing. Can you? No, it's not. It's not exactly the same as the, you know, the classroom interaction that you, you, you can sort of, you can get a sense for how the kids are reacting. But um, yeah, it's as good as we can get at the moment. So. Painsley invites the Year 6 pupils to visit the school over three days, with the other two devoted to meeting teachers from other departments, without the help of video conferencing. You've been here a few hours now. Are you beginning to relax? Yeah. Were you scared at first? Yeah. What were you scared of? I don't know, just getting here and seeing what it was like. And what was it like? It was, it was better than I imagined. What have you enjoyed most? I really enjoyed uh, making the slides and actually finding out that Paisley is cool. Are you looking forward to going back to Paisley? Um, yeah. Why? Um, because it's a really good school and it's got all the good stuff. In what have you discovered about Paisley today? Um, how to use the different computers to our school and how to create more things on it. So will you be a bit nervous when you come back in September? Um, no, because I've um, been today and yesterday and I know a bit more about it. We asked Bechter to give us their view on the use of video conferencing at Painsley. We have a school here where they thought about uh, what transition from Key Stage 2 to 3 is, um, how they can use technology to um, help children produce um, little PowerPoint presentations about themselves, about their interests, who they are, and alongside that um, learn some ICT skills which they can um, develop in their primary schools. Is video conferencing really an effective way of delivering lessons? Video conferencing has many benefits, as we've seen it used here, whereby a person with a particular skill or resource is providing that skill to a number of venues. But you're not offering it as a solution to teacher shortages, are you? Um, no, I wouldn't want to, uh, to offer it as a shortage um, solution, but clearly in a situation where a school may want to offer a course where it hasn't got staff, then they could link up with other schools um, to, to draw on that expertise. Painsley's aim is to get video conferencing equipment in all the primaries so they can deliver more lessons on ICT. Keep the river flowing, that's what I believe in. I think that year one is where we start and I as a, an ICT coordinator in a secondary school, if I want the best results in year 11, 12, 13, I've got to start down in year one and I've got to support those colleagues of mine in the primary school to actually uh, bring their IT on and, and, and offer them any help and support I can, really. The final session of the day exploits keypad technology to provide feedback on the PowerPoint lesson. For the pupils, it's more like a television okay, quiz show. Please. Which of these is not an input device? Answer now, thank you. Which one have you gone for? Next year, please. Um, it beats there. Right, um, that's when it's wrong and that's when it's right. Back for your own side, oh, please. So you already know. What's your second guess then? Um, uh, B. It's a wonderful technology, you know. I mean, to be able to ask a cohort of children a question, get immediate feedback, to, to, to know really how that learning objective has 
been understood by their children. Immediate feedback. Is there amb any ambiguity in the, what's been taught them? I've got that straight away. The final question gauges whether pupils are still frightened of transition. How do you feel about coming to Painsley? <laughs> Which one have you pressed? Looking forward to it. Not very excited. I'm just looking forward to it, really. Still a bit nervous? Yeah, a bit. As for the 17 who answered they were terrified of returning, the school will be looking out for them to check if they really are scared or just being a bit silly. At King Edward VII High School in Melton Mowbray, children had even more reason to be alarmed about joining Year 7. The school has nearly 2,000 pupils, but the Year 7 intake is just 100. That's because most of the pupils go through middle schools and arrive at the high school in year 10. Nervousness amongst lower years may have been contributing to disappointing results at key stage three. The backdrop really was to ease the transition from primary to secondary, acknowledging that the students are joining a very large organisation. You felt that transition was the key to improving results? It certainly was a part and parcel of the process, yes. Um, it, it's not the only factor, but obviously if you can get the transition right, uh, then any learning loss that typically does happen when students transfer from one key stage to another can be minimised. A working party came up with plans to transform the learning environment, to give pupils their own space and their own wireless network. All the lower years are kept together in one building, known as the Sarsen Centre. Inside, Year 7 pupils are found in their own area, or base, of four open-plan classrooms. We took a suite of four adjoining classrooms, we knocked out the corridor, and we actually made our Year 7 e-learning base. That base is solely for the use of Year 7 students, so it gives them a sense of security, it gives them some ownership over a space in the school, and therefore, most of their lessons are delivered within that vase. In fact, over 50% of their time is taught lessons in the base. Students actually only leave for specialist lessons when they need facilities such as in science, design technology and PE and so on. This corridor in another part of the school highlights the difference made by the makeover. The Year 7 territory is also colour-coded, so you know when you're crossing the border and entering the terrain of Year 8. And it gives them an environment to identify with, to have access to, that's a safe environment. Um, it's a, an environment that gives them a transition from the, the one classroom that they mostly experience at primary school to the uh, number of classrooms that they experience at secondary school. If you don't get it right at Year 7, you're going to struggle uh, to keep the hold of the students. And I think to move into such a big school in, in, in such a, a way as having to go and find your way around the, the big campus, I think, would be very difficult for a lot of them to make that transition. The school's website was also developed to aid transition. Year 7 has its own portal, so pupils know what to expect before they arrive and what to do once they've got there. If we look at Module 1, um, what the students are doing for science. You can see that it has a brief outline of what the students will be doing in science and where the module fits into the national curriculum and the expectations at the end of each module. It's helpful for both the students and the parents. It shows what the parents could do to help the students learn. Um, we've also got the induction booklet and it has all the key information. Which one of those questions do they click on the most? I suppose um, the times of the school day are all essential, I suppose they're all essential information. It helps with transition in a number of ways. Number one is actually showing them the information, but also the fear of the unknown is very pertinent to students in year six transferring into year seven. They have all the horror stories that generally happen around transition. For them to actually go onto a website and see photographs of current year seven, to actually be able to read about the activities that they will be engaging in, to actually embark on a discussion with current Year 7 via the portal, look at key events, look at all of the information that's on there and actually relate to students that have been through this experience the year before and read about their experiences, that can really set their fears at rest and therefore they're, they're not entering a, the fear of the unknown. Pupils are encouraged to use the website at home, but also in break times, on these computers in the Independent Learning Centre. 
In the classroom, there are two laptop trolleys shared by the four Year 7 classes. We asked the man from Bector to also visit the King Edward VII school to take a look at ICT in relation to transition. First, he received an explanation of the Year 7 portal and the modular curriculum. And there is actually an innovative review and planning week separating each of the modules. And that's a deliberate ploy to actually stop students from studying the curriculum and actually designed to make them take stock of where they've got to. Here's a way that the ICT can sit in the background to help the staff deliver the curriculum. I think we know from the research that's been conducted that many schools are developing their own learning platforms and things akin to what we've seen here, where materials are available centrally and electronically because they know that it can save them time, it's relatively easy to change, um, they can add it together as a complete program that's available conceptually, you can see it on screen, you can access bits of it um, in different places at different times and at different speeds. So yes, I think this is very much the way that many schools are going. The website forms an important part of a two-day induction programme at the King Edward VII School. Pupils from 12 primaries are taking part in the programme, which also involves games around the grounds and exercises in team building. Photographs from this session are being put immediately on the Year 7 portal to encourage pupils to explore the site. What I want us to do today is become familiar with this site because what you will find in the lessons is that teachers will refer you to the internet and then you can go to ICT or English or design whatever particular subject you are in at that time. Were you a bit worried when you first arrived this morning? Yeah. I thought the school was really, really big. I was really scared. Are you scared now? No. Why aren't you scared anymore? Because um, I've made lots of friends and I'm happy here. Are you scared about using this laptop? No. No? No. I'm looking at the, a map at the moment about the sourcing. So you won't get lost then, will you? No. no. What do you think of the website? Do you think it's the sort of thing you'll look at at home? Yeah. To do what? Um, to learn. I found all of the different things that we're going to be doing um, when I first come here after the induction days. Anything in particular? PE. Yeah. The PE learning that we're going to do about sprinting and rugby. Is that what you're interested in? Yeah. I'm looking at the art bit. Art? Yeah. And what have you found in the art bit? Next year we're looking at drawing gods. Gods? Yeah. Right. It looks really fun. So you'll come back, will you? Yeah. I've found a, a load of uh, educational games. Yeah? About what? Like uh, one about the human body where you've got to put the right parts in the right places. What happens if you don't? A bunch of baby maggots come and eat up the part and then go try again. Charming. And did you find that on the King Edward VII website? Yeah. How's the lesson gone? Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Yeah, I think they've, they've managed to find their way around the internet, the school site. Um, they've all managed to log on really well and get the hang of the uh, passwords. One of the main issues in the classrooms like this is health and safety, which I think they've managed to get a hold of. Do you think it does settle pupils into their new school? Yeah, I think it helps them because I think a lot of students feel comfortable when they're using the computers. So today I've noticed that the students have relaxed into using them because they're happy using them. They've used them quite a lot in primary school and it just lets them see um, what, what they're doing during their induction period and then gives them a, an overview of what the school's like when they start in September. Here's the benefit of the technology bringing the learning to the learner rather than the learner having to go to the learning because they're using portables and wireless technology to allow them to fulfill that objective of teaching the children in class groups. I certainly think it's the case from my experiences having been a secondary school teacher that young children entering a large secondary school initially do find that very daunting because they could be in a science lesson one uh, uh, for their first lesson, the next one might biology, and, and they'll have to get used to finding it. I'm not saying that long term they haven't got to get used to that, but in order to gently aid the transition, it seems to me this is what the staff are doing here. The induction day also includes an introduction to the Independent Learning Centre, 
where pupils are once again encouraged to use the Year 7 portal, this time through a PowerPoint presentation. On the back of it shows you how you can access it from home, so your parents or your guardian can have a look at the work that you're doing at school and help you with your homework. It's followed by a quiz. The answers are, of course, only available on the website. There's a quiz sheet under every keyboard. It's a bit of fun. It's not a test. And we'll have a look at it at the end of the session. It's really good. Yeah. It gives you loads of information. About what? About different topics and things like that. And it, things like that, yeah. Do you look at it at home? Um, I think so, yeah, if I'm like, stuck on my homework. Yeah, really? Yeah. What's the best part of the website, do you think? Uh, all the pictures of Lincoln. Really? Why? Because I don't know. Do you want to go there now? Yeah. OK, so your first answer then. So how many modules do you study in a year? What to tell me? Five. Five. Well done. Yeah, five modules. I think it tells us that ICT can be a valuable tool in, in helping children make the transition from primary to secondary school by bringing the learning to them, by bringing resources to them. But it's also about good teaching. It's also about good management and also good ICT teaching and good ICT management. And I think in both the schools we've seen that coming together so that ICT is there not to dominate the learning but to support it and to enable these young people to make the transition effectively with the help of the staff in these schools and the support from their parents from primary to secondary so that their education may be something that's of great value to them. Mrs Emery, can you hear us? Gremlins are out today, aren't they? We've just had this working a minute ago. Of course, when you're introducing new technologies, there's always a danger of something going wrong. But what are a few gremlins when tackling such a major nightmare? 